I was helping my friend Winnie plan her first Mediterranean cruise. She said she wanted a cruise that went to the very best ports and avoided the worst. This is an impossible task, so I decided to only send her to the worst ones, hoping she would thank me in the end. I'm Gary Bembridge, here's where I told Winnie to go and what happened. There's at least 45 ports where cruise ships can dock and more where ships can anchor and tender guests in, in the Mediterranean. A week-long Mediterranean cruise calls on at most six ports, so I had to slash these down to shortness for Winnie to find a cruise that calls into as many of the must-visit ports, in my view, as possible. That's where the worst ports come to their own. If you're cruising the Mediterranean, and if, like Winnie, it's a first Western, Eastern, or Southern Greek Islands cruise, focus on getting to as many ports that are gateways to famous cities or historic sites in the region, even if the ports themselves are awful. Many of the ports are working container and freight ports in uninspiring towns with limited things to see and do close by, and actually far from those iconic cities and sites. They're not where you will want to spend time. It's what they grant access to that makes them essential to have on any list. Here are the seven ones that I recommended to Winnie. Trivicevecce is one of the most common ports that ships call on in the Mediterranean. It's an uninspiring, slightly run-down town with little to see and do. But Rome, one of the most historically rich cities in the world with incredible sites like the Colosseum, the Pantheon, Trevi Fountain, and the Vatican City, is an hour to an hour and a half away. The Verno is also an unattractive, busy industrial and cruise port. The city is fairly unattractive. The grand city of Florence with Michelangelo's David, Ponte Vecchio Bridge, the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, and the Basilica of Santa Croce, it's just an hour and a half away. Pisa and the Leaning Tower is just 45 minutes away. If you want to see Venice, for example, with its Grand Canals, St. Mark's Square, and Basilica, and the fascinating Doge's Palace, you now will have to dock in the very functional port of Ravenna or Trieste, both of which are around two hours from Venice. Even if your ship is small enough to be allowed to dock in Venice, as I was on my recent Viking Sky Cruise uh, last March, it was inside a freight port on the mainland. We weren't allowed to walk around the area because it was just seen as too dangerous, and it still took us 45 minutes to get into Venice. La Spezia in northern Italy is an industrial port with little around it to explore, but in an hour or less, you can be exploring the gorgeous Cinque Terre region, a collection of five amazing villages clinging to the hillside with quaint shops and really popular beaches. Catacolon in Greece is a small town with one road of tourist trap shops that takes about half an hour to explore. But an hour away is the vast Olympia, home of the Olympics with extensive ruins, and a truly remarkable museum. Piraeus is a busy industrial and cruise port with a city to match, where you could catch a hop-on, hop-off bus to the beach. But again, about an hour or so away is the rich history of Athens, with the beautiful Acropolis, with Parthenon and Museum, the Pantheatic Stadium, and so on. To get to see the incredible ruins of Pompeii or the gorgeous island of Capri, the port is Naples. It's about an hour away from the ruins based on traffic, and it's about an hour or so boat ride to the island. As I said to Winnie, these are unattractive and unappealing ports in themselves, making them some of the worst ports in their own right to call in the Mediterranean. But they are also the best because they are gateways to iconic cities and must-see sites. One warning and watch out I gave her was that the cruise lines often try and disguise these ports, or they certainly don't make it very clear about the nature of these ports. Look at this itinerary from a cruise line website and brochure. It shows the ship calls on Florence slash Pisa and Rome. However, as you've learned, it does not. The ports are Livorno and Civicevecchia, as you now know. As I told Winnie, there is a really simple way to know if the city or major site is at the port by looking at the detailed itinerary listing. Here the lines usually have the name of the major city or attraction they know passengers like, people like Winnie want to see first, they'll have those really first, and then in brackets after it, the name of the actual port that the ship will really be calling into. So for example, for that cruise that I was talking about, you can see they have written Florence, Pisa, brackets, Livorno. 
If you're unfamiliar with the geography of a country, this tip actually helps. So for example, I'm considering this Mediterranean cruise to see the incredible Ephesus ruins. But you can see from the listing that the port closest it calls on is the tourist resort of Kusadasi. And checking that's about an hour or so from the port. So after this discussion, I wanted Winnie to know that I do also recommend ports that sound like they could be some of the worst to go to or have reasons that they're the worst to go to, but she would definitely thank me after visiting because they are some of the most memorable. The Mediterranean is a popular vacation region and the best cities draw land-based holiday makers, weekend and city breakers, and of course, cruise passengers. All the cities I've already mentioned suffer from being packed. So that also makes them the worst ports in that way too. Historic Venice, where us visitors go, for example, has a population of just 60,000, but during summer has 60,000 to 100,000 visitors every single day crowding in. There are three ports that I've not mentioned that suffer from big crowds that make them amongst the worst ports for that reason, but I insisted Winnie should have on her must-see list. The first is Barcelona. This city gets an estimated 12 million visitors a year. That's because the attractions and sites are worth it. There's the Ramblas de Stroll, the quirky Gaudi architecture, and of course the famous unfinished Sagrada Familia, which alone gets almost 5 million visitors a year. The other is Dubrovnik. This stunning city in Croatia suffered with so many visitors, especially cruise ship passengers, crowding into that small walled city centre that the authorities are working on staggering calls of ships throughout the day and into the evening to try and cope with it. Santorini is another. The capital Fiera high up on the caldera, has tight winding streets. It does have incredible views of those famous white houses, but it gets crammed, rammed full in summer. The city of Oya close by gets crammed because people go there to watch the sunset. Its streets throng with people, and it will actually be pretty hard for Winnie to get those famous shots of those houses uh, with blue roofs and things that everyone going there wants to take. But again, it's a port that she will absolutely cherish. My mother-in-law, for example, visited over 20 years ago and still talks about it despite acknowledging the crowds. Now these three additional ports are, I think, amongst the worst in the Mediterranean for crowds, but they're highly memorable, making them must visit despite that. There are though, of course, ports that are both beautiful and interesting that I did have to suggest to Winnie that she should visit from that long list of options I mentioned earlier. There are four ports that stand out for me that I did suggest Winnie take a look at. Monte Carlo is one. To get to see the slightly surreal and of course opulent city is definitely worth it. It's a great day walking around the harbor filled with mega yachts, strolling around the famous casino, posing with the flash cars outside the Hotel de Paris, which by the way I stayed in once by the way, it's very overpriced and I had a tiny room. The next four ports are probably a little bit more substantive than Monte Carlo and are favorites of mine that I recommend people think about. Split in Croatia is an ancient town of great beauty. It's walkable from the cruise port, it's rich in history, has a wide boulevard on the ocean front with lots of cafes to sit and people watch after you've done your city tour. Kotor in Montenegro is another ship sell through a fjords-like entrance to reach the ancient city within these large formidable ancient walls. Ships either dock minutes from the entrance or if it's really busy or the big ships they kind of anchor and they tend to get in. If you're fit enough it costs around eight euros to climb up the mountain behind the city for some of the very best views in the Mediterranean. But let's end Malta is another incredible port with a stunning sail in. The harbour has large ancient ramparts. It's possibly the most dramatic looking of any Mediterranean port. Tour of the city and amazing architecture is fascinating. Palma da Mallorca while it's not as beautiful a port, is a remarkable city. The Spanish royal family base themselves there in the summer, as do many wealthy Spaniards. There's a massive cathedral to explore, one of the largest and grandest in the Mediterranean. While many of the best ports are also the worst ports in the Mediterranean, getting to the right and musty places in the region is hopefully what I've helped Winnie to do, even though they are some of the worst ports. If you found this interesting and want to know more about cruising the region, watch this video of the biggest blunders passengers make when cruising in the Med, starting with the mistake almost everyone makes and regrets it. See you over there.